fit. Now, a little bit about myself uh, to begin with. As mentioned, I'm the country manager of Australia, uh, but I'm, just, I'm sure many of you are noticing uh, my accent is a little bit funny. Um, I'm the one of many Canadians who have uh, invaded the beautiful country of Australia. And uh, you know, I can't tell you how, how fortunate I am to, to be here uh, working in this lovely country. Uh, so I'll stop pumping your tires and we'll get into it. Now, <clears throat> the accounting industry is changing, right? Many of you have probably been experiencing this and watching it change before your eyes. Now, what's happening exactly? Well, you know, we're moving away from desktop applications and paper-based processes, right? And kind of gone are the days of accounting and bookkeeping being done with a rear view mirror approach to cash flow. Now, what are we moving to? Well, cloud computing, machine learning, and automation are helping advisors unlock really, really major workflow efficiencies. And you know, in my mind, it's it's the immediate access to client data, right? It's live bank feeds and being cloud-based. I mean, you can get immediate access to client data anywhere, anytime, allowing you to much more efficiently and actively service your clients. Now, just to give you a sense of the global numbers, it is estimated that small business cloud accounting will grow from 2 million global subscribers to 30 million in the next 10 years uh, alone. That's a, a compound annual growth rate of 31%. So the, the numbers are you know, astonishing about you know, how many businesses and firms alike are gonna be adopting this technology to um, you know, leverage it in many different ways. Now, obviously these cloud accounting giants, Intuit and Zero, are the ones driving this shift because they are the kind of the top of the market small business general ledger solutions. Now, many of you do know Zero and QuickBooks Online. Um, where we're from in Canada, uh, QBO is sort of the top company into it, whereas here, Zero obviously uh, have the market share. Uh, but certainly, it is quite interesting to see that the global battle between these two, and at the end of the day, it can only serve uh, you, the advisor, and you know, the small businesses you serve um, by having companies like this uh, competing. Now, where does HubDoc fit in in this picture, right? You have these general ledgers, these powerful solutions that, that really do help you manage your clients. And, you know, there are hundreds of apps in their ecosystems. Now, HubDoc is an app in an ecosystem, in Xero and the Intuit apps ecosystem. Now, we at HubDoc believe accountants and bookkeepers are the unsung heroes of the small business economy, right? Meaning, you know, you guys help your small business clients succeed by really demystifying the complexities of their finances. So and you're not just doing compliance, you're not just doing bookkeeping, you're actually, you know, giving them a clear visualization of how their business is doing. Now, in a perfect world, like majority of your time would be doing just that, right? Advising them. But unfortunately, due to, you know, older applications and perhaps paper-based processes, you're often forced to prioritize mundane administrative tasks like document collection and data entry. You know, these two administrative tasks, that's what they are, can take up to 30% of your time. And that's time that could be spent, you know, advising your clients or even scaling your own practice. So this feature is where HubDoc comes in. This is the pain that we're trying to solve. We're on a mission at HubDoc to automate document collection and data entry downstream in accounting platforms and, and thereby you know changing the way accounting and bookkeeping gets done. Now at a very high level the collection of financial documents is automatic with HubDoc meaning no more chasing clients at month quarter or year end. We actually can fetch recurring bills and statements from over 250 um, Australian banks and suppliers. Think, you know, banking institutions, utility companies, telecom providers, uh, retail suppliers like Bunnings and Reese, um, software vendors, anything with an online portal, we can theoretically build a portal that fetches and files those documents. Now, on the flip side, 
obviously not every supplier is available online. So clients can still manually get documents into HubDoc. Using their beautiful scan snap scanner, snapping a picture with our mobile application or emailing documents in. Now, once documents are securely stored in HubDoc, using one of these you know, two major avenues to get documents in, the key data is extracted, right? And because we integrate downstream with Zero and QBO, we can actually create transactions from these very same source documents, which is an extreme efficiency creator in terms of automating your reconciliation process and automatically audit-proofing your client's business because these source documents are attached to every transaction that we're creating. So let's talk a bit more about how HubDoc and Zero and QBO really work together. You know, I'm sure, you know, many of you, if not all of you have direct experience with bank feeds, right? And how, you know, banking feeds pull in live, you know, transaction streams of your client's bank accounts. Now, with HubDoc, similar to other document processing platforms, we're able to you know, extract data from receipts and invoices and push code and publish those to Zero and QBO and create transactions, right? Now, these transactions are gonna automatically match up with the bank feed. Now, that automation of reconciliation is fantastic, but you know, what's the missing piece? Well, in our mind, the missing piece is getting that bank statement, right? You still require a bank or credit card statement from your client to check closing balances on that bank feed, right? In case there was an error of any kind and a discrepancy, you actually need that verified data in the form of a bank statement to double check where that went wrong. Where did the data feed double up? Where did a transaction get missed, right? And we get you that data automatically. Your client can set up a feed, as I'll show you in a few moments during the demo, that fetches and files those statements and the same day it becomes available, you receive it in HubDoc. So, you know, we find, um, and we are, you know, in uh, the past lodgement season right now, getting you that verified data, you know, getting you that bank or credit card statement automatically creates tremendous efficiency in your business by eliminating, uh, you know, a pointless and painful pain point with them. Um, but it also creates efficiencies in allowing you to close out a client's file immediately. Now, this is kind of a brief look at what an actual HubDoc account looks like and our filing cabinet structure on the left-hand side and source documents on the right. Um, and we'll actually get into exactly what that looks like and how it all flows in in a second here. Um, but once again, keep in mind automated document collection and really instantaneous data extraction. We don't want you to ever have to ask a client for one of these documents again. So we'll get into the demo. We'll kind of spend a little bit more time uh, walking through the product here. Um, if there's any questions about anything whatsoever, uh, please, please don't hesitate to, to stop me. Um, looks like we have one question. Oh, perfect, Rochelle just wrote, please have questions. Um, awesome, so kind of getting into HubDoc here, what we're looking at is one of your client's HubDoc accounts, right? These would be all the recurring bills and statements pertaining to their business, right? Your client could have unique login access to this account, and this would enable them to access their key financial documents. Now, from the advisor's perspective, because um, we all know, you know, source documents are, are really the lifeblood of accounting work, um, this is a collaboration tool, right? We're a collaboration tool so that you have this one-stop shop to find client documents. You know, you're not having to um, perhaps go into your email for some, or maybe your client's dropping off hard copies, or you know, search around for all these different places to find client documents. Quite literally, your client's recurring bills and statements can all be stored within a hub doc. Now, as I mentioned kind of off the, off the hop, what makes us different and kind of our, our passion uh, in this space is really driving efficiencies. And, and that main efficiency is in document collection. We've built hundreds of feeds, as I mentioned, over 250 in Australia alone that fetch and file documents. So I'll just show you what I mean exactly by that. Now, 
I put in my client number and password here for CBA. Very similar to setting up a bank feed in, in QBO uh, as an example. Now, we've actually built our own proprietary feeds. The great news about this is your client can do this on your behalf. Um, obviously, you don't want the liability of having your client's bank logins. But once your client establishes this feed, they then give you read-only access to their financial documents. Because what you'll see here in a matter of moments is HubDoc will fetch and file all of the available bank, credit card, mortgage, and loan statements from the CBA portal automatically. So these are actually real PDFs from Commonwealth Bank flowing into HubDoc as we speak. So when we first connect, we actually fetch everything historically. So if you can imagine you're, you're onboarding a new client, um, you know, perhaps you're just doing, you have a client that does their reconciliation work and you do cleanup work on their file. Maybe it's not even month end, maybe it's quarter or year end. If they set up one of these feeds, they give you immediate access to that data, right? So we fetch everything historically, but then we fetch everything on an ongoing recurring basis. So the same day a, a, a statement from any which sub account becomes available, HubDoc fetches it immediately that same day. So once again, it's really giving you immediate access to verified data because that's what this bank statement is. It's, it's verified data that the bank has given the okay saying that these are the actual correct and appropriate transactions from the client's file. And what we really find is, you know, clients find such a tangible benefit in this ability to fetch documents, right? If you think about it, this is administrative work that is absolved from them. You know, they don't have to think about logging in, downloading, and sending you one of these documents ever again because HubDoc will do it on their behalf, right? The, the most that would happen is that they change their logins and they might have to update their credentials on HubDoc um, just to ensure that the feed stays running. Now, obviously, we fetch bank statements and other documents from the bank. Um, but we also fetch from a number of other different portals, PayPal, Stripe, Square, Shopify, transactions from all those you know, e-commerce vendors, um, telco, utility bills, software vendor invoices. So uh, I'm going to be running through this list here very, very briefly. This is our Australian specific list. The list runs around, uh, I think you're almost around 250 deep, as I mentioned. Um, that's just Australian specific. Our, our global connection list is, is quite a bit longer. Um, and no need to kind of furiously write anything down or remember because I will send this to everyone as a follow-up. But as you can see, we actually fetch from, you know, most of the major Australian banks and credit cards already. Now, you'll see a CSV column, and yes, besides certain banks, we also fetch CSVs from many banks as well. And the idea behind that is, you know, creating automation around getting you transactions. So, I mean, as one example, ANZ and CBA have turned off personal credit card feeds flowing into zero. Um, you know, this has caused a tremendous amount of uh, pain for advisors having to go and chase their clients out and ask them to send them these transaction feeds. Well, with HubDoc, we actually fetch and file a monthly transaction summary of any bank account that we fetch, you know, giving you those, those transactions automatically so that you can go about your work without having to have you know, a bit of a painful touch with your client. But scrolling down, we'll also see a, a number of different portals, you know, from agricultural to investment, insurance, and petrol. Um, scrolling down here, Vic Roads, uh, Trades, Bunnings, Middies, and Reese. We, we built our Bunnings connection about a few months ago, maybe four or five months ago, actually, and it's already become our most popular connection. Because uh, the, the, the value prop is actually quite astonishing. If, if the client uses the Bunnings Power Pass, then not only do they get a 5% discount when shopping at Bunnings, but HubDoc will fetch and file their transactions from Bunnings automatically into HubDoc. So they don't even need to get a paper receipt and take a picture of it any longer uh, because HubDoc solves that for them, right? And, and I get it, like I, we have a mobile app. I love the convenience of taking a picture of a receipt, 
but I'm still having to walk that receipt back to my car oftentimes, snap a picture of it there, right? And put it somewhere, throw it out. With, with this PowerPass connection, um, you know, your trading clients really don't even need to think about that. It's just kind of an automated transaction, automated document collection. Now, uh, retail suppliers like Coca-Cola, Fuji Xerox, you know, Woolies, Officeworks, et cetera, are available as well. Scrolling into our software vendor connections like Adobe, uh, as I mentioned, Pay PayPal, you know, Microsoft Office 365, Telstra Apps, Marketplace. Uh, you know, we'll even grab your, your monthly zero invoices, believe it or not. Um, and then finishing off with our supported telco and utility connection. So once again, these connections are all, we believe to be a real tangible benefit to both you, but, but your clients as well, right? You can look at some platforms as being more beneficial to one or the other, but you know we find that SMEs just love the automation that HubDoc provides with the fetching component. Now, with something like a Telstra bill, it's obviously transactional, right? The, the, the Commonwealth Bank statement is just a summary of your bank feeds. It's you know we're fetching it to create automation around getting you that data. Now, with regards to a, a Telstra bill it's transactional so we're actually pulling out this key data from the document automatically so similar to many other processing platforms we can actually configure rules we can split gst and gst free line items we can push code and create this as a purchase spend money you know expense claim sales invoice or credit note uh, we can set up tracking classes um, locations etc to better track um, and we can actually create, in this case, I created a bill with the source document attached, um, but also with the bill date, the due date, GST and GST free line item split, right? And so what's really important for me when I'm creating transactions, like when I'm doing bookkeeping for HubDoc, uh, one being that that source document's attached, right? It, 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 gives me, um, you know, it <laughs> helps me sleep at night, so to speak, when, you know, I know my books are audit proved in zero. Uh, I not only have every transaction in HubDoc, but I actually have source documents attached to the corresponding transaction in zero. Um, but also knowing that I'm getting the GST amount correct, right? I use HubDoc as my review process push through, and I know that, you know, these transactions are having the appropriate account code allotment and GST amount allotted. So, you know, that's quite simply the automated fetching side of HubDoc. Now, the flip side is, you know, the, the manually uploaded documents. So, obviously, in this day and age, there's still going to be physical restaurant receipts. There's still going to be receipts from local contractors or invoices, rather. Um, petrol receipts, right? We do have a mobile application that your clients can snap pictures of those documents. You know, they can also email documents into HubDoc and they can browse and upload directly from their uh, computer. So just to show you a few examples, um, we will be at the ABN conference in October. If anyone will be there, I uploaded this. We extracted it, um, Airbnb documents. Um, you know, he, here is a Jetstar PDF tax invoice that I've uh, uploaded. Um, some other examples would be this receipt from the Apple Store that I've emailed into our platform. Um, and then sort of more um, photograph type images like a receipt that I literally just snapped an image of. Now, very similarly to how I showed you with Telstra, um, it's about setting up supplier rules, right? So coming and setting up supplier rules at a document or an account level to let HubDoc know how you want this created in zero. Once you set up these rules one time, for instance, I've set up a tax code rule for Apple because I know that 10% GST is going to be applied to my total each and every time that gets calculated. But, you know, I also have you know, department account or tracking classes set up. I have a certain account code applied to this every time. So, you know, HubDoc actually, um, you know, remembers this for me for the next time a document from the supplier is uploaded. So that's when kind of the, the real, um, I guess, processing and reconciliation automation comes through when you do have rules set up for many of your suppliers. 
Now, processing times do vary. If it is um, you know, something like a, a PDF invoice, it does process quite quickly. Um, something that's like an image JPEG will process in around um, 15 to 20 hours. We are uh, working quite diligently and our um, machine learning team is, is making strides in processing a document like this much faster. Um, but that is, you know, at a glance. HubDoc. Now, to give everyone a bit of sense of, of my workflow, I'm using HubDoc as my document processing solution. Now, when I push through to zero, when I actually do my bookkeeping, I skip the draft section of zero, right? I'm actually reviewing in HubDoc, meaning I'm reviewing the document, I'm reviewing my GST amounts, I'm reviewing my account code and tracking class allotment. And generally, I'm pushing through as an authorized purchase or as a spend money transaction. And in that way, I'm pushing directly to my bank feed. I'm not doubling up my work. And as soon as I publish it, I'm actually reconciling that on my bank feed at the same time, right? That's actually allows me to, you know, make sure I do my checks and balances, make sure I'm not duplicating anything. And it really is, you know, an efficient way for me to stay on top of my work. Um, but once again, once these rules are set up and once, you know, especially these, these banking feeds are set up, it really does create a tremendous amount of automation. I mean, the, the thing that I truly love, and this comes from, you know, a HubDoc user trying not to be as, as biased as I probably sounding, but, you know, the, the processing side is great. Now, I'm not a, a registered BAS agent. I'm not an accountant. I do do the, the payables for our, our business. It keeps me kind of close to our product and, and understanding of our clients' needs, and I do actually, I, I love it. Um, but it's great that my advisor can come into our HubDoc account and access that statement, right? They don't have to ask me for it. it it's there, they have read only access to, you know, accessing that data, that banking data without actually having to log into our, our, our banking account. So um, that's all there. And, you know, I, I rarely, except for kind of payroll, um, mainly payroll is when I interact with, with my advisor and they generally ping us when everything's complete or, you know, if we need to lodge super um, for, for our employees. Now, just to swing into to pricing here uh, very quickly, um, we do give advisors uh, lifetime free accounts. Um, so I believe I'll be sending a follow-up email with um, Rochelle's go ahead or she might send one for me. Uh, but we give advisors lifetime free accounts. The idea behind that is you know, we want you to use the product. We want you to understand it. We really want you to become hot dog champions. And you know, once you've used it, maybe you'll start connecting feeds, maybe you'll connect it to a demo company in Zero or your own Zero file or QBO for that matter. Um, you can then add clients from that free account. Now, the monthly fee per client is $27.50, including GST. So for $25 a month, you get unlimited usage. So we don't charge you based on you know, volume of documents processed, filed, fetched, stored, what have you. A very kind of, um, you know, I think, simple pricing model to wrap your head around, especially if you can imagine you know, time cost savings and what in an hour of your time, you or your client's time is worth for that matter. And then you as the advisor, um, if you're, taking over the billing for your clients and on charging them, you're entitled to discounts as you scale on our platform. Um, last thing I'll let everyone a little bit of insight in on is this promotion that we are doing at the very moment. I did do a bit of a pitch for the scan snap earlier. Uh, I can't say enough about how awesome these scanners are. The IX100 retails for around $300. The 500 is uh, around um, you know, 500 to $600, I think, depending on where you get it. And we're actually um, giving you free scanners with the purchase of um, five or 10 accounts in one day. Um, if you have your ducks in a row, get started. Um, looks like we have a question. Yeah, so uh, we had a question about pricing. So this pricing is for any advisors. Um, so we don't, um, uh, I guess, to discriminate when it comes to that. Um, if you are a, um, you know, a bookkeeper, an accountant, if you are a, um, you know, a cloud integrator who, who's going to be promoting this to clients, we, we generally want, um, you know, 
we expect you to have kind of monthly bookkeeping clients or accounting clients that you're going to be you know, using Opdoc for. Um, but absolutely, these accounts are free. And so, um, you know, with Rochelle's thumbs up, I'll get everyone a link to sign up and a follow up email. If you're itching to go right now, if you go to app.hubdoc.com slash sign up, you can actually do that before I even send you that. You might get, even get a, a friendly email from someone on our sales team. <laughs> so just to touch on this um, you know, promotion again, you do have to get your, your ducks in a row to add clients in a certain day. The promotion is until March 31st, but uh, you do get a, a free scan snap scanner that are just fantastic, either as a gift to your client or maybe to use internally if your client is still you know, dropping off a, a sheet box full of uh, paper um you can really create efficiencies by using that, that scanner hey matt we've got another great question from renee around yep. whether or not the client will still receive their documents um by email or the current way once yeah that is, that is a, a great question i'm glad you asked that i think it's um largely dependent on that supplier or bank so for instance um I, I am getting my Optus bills um, sent to me online, and I was still getting them sent to me in a paper copy, but they were charging me two fifty a month. So I just realized that shut off paper copy because I thought that was you know a waste of paper, and <laughs> I didn't want to spend that money. Um, but again, it is dependent on that bank or supplier, and there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of consistency. I know that some banks allow you to get paper and electronic copy. Um, some might be either or. Um, so uh, unfortunately, yeah, every bank would have different terms on that. But what I have noticed is that I, I believe that the option to have both, if the client still you know, wants that paper copy and have the assurances of that, um, you know, they absolutely can um, have that paper copy sent in addition. Um, so just, yeah, using my office example is probably a good example in that in terms of that. Thank you for that, Matt. Um, one from Peter, that once you've got a HubDoc, a HubDoc account set up and ready to go, um, can multiple people access it? Yeah, so in short, multiple people can, can absolutely access a HubDoc uh, account. Um, what we are lacking, this is for sake of transparency, Peter, um, we're working on more robust user permissions right now. So what that means for us is just um, limiting certain users access to view certain documents. Quite obviously, um, you know, my coworkers, my staff, for example, aren't privy to bank statements. I don't want them to see bank statements. So I get them to email in any documents and they actually just snap pictures with the mobile app and, and email those pictures in that way. Um, what I can say is kind of a top of our priority list and uh, we will be introducing user permissions uh, in 2018. So those are coming along, but um, we do have multiple access. I think that generally we're best suited for direct access to HubDoc for principals in a company, um, kind of high level partner access, and then any employees can use the unique email address to send documents in, because um, that you know, doesn't allow them access anything, but still allows them to send in documents. And a, a good one from um, Jackie, that if um, staff members working in your practice, do they only have access to um, a certain number? You can limit which clients they have access to? Yeah, absolutely. So that's entirely up, up to you. I'm glad you asked that as well. So um, from our organization screen, you can see I have my uh, Bunston CPA, imagine that. Um, we have my clients listed beneath me. Um, click the Manage Users button. Not only can you add staff here, and the great thing about that is the staff actually get a HubDoc account created for themselves that they can play around with and use for testing. But then you're able to give them access to certain subsets of your client base. So you know, even if they're just working on a client file for the end of the quarter to do some some brief cleanup work, you can give them access for that week and then revoke access after that, right? So yeah, at a click of a button, you can add and revoke access uh, for your staff members. Um, so I had another point, uh, and sorry, Rashad, I interrupted you there. Feel free to go ahead. Oh no, that's okay. 
Yeah, perfect. So just one last thing. Um, we do have integrations, as I think you saw in the PowerPoint, with cloud storage services. So um, Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, ShareFile being I think, primarily uh, ones that are used in market. And what that looks like is just the ability to back up documents. So, you know, I think that in this day and age, you want copies made uh, of documents, you know, especially I mean, obviously, if you're in physical storage, you do want to have electronic copies. But, you know, having electronic copies does give you maneuverability from platform to platform. So as you can see, I've actually um, mimicked my folder structure from HubDoc completely and actually pushed copies of all of my documents uh, you know, downstream to Dropbox. So that's just a, a way to create data redundancy in your client's business. And you know, you might already be using Dropbox or Box or one of these platforms to, you know, share uh, documents with your staff members. And what HubDoc can do and what some firms use us for is to create automation around getting a statement from a bank portal um, to a Dropbox file right because that's where your staff can go in and access documents and, and if there are you know other people accessing this so let's say you're an accountant and you know you want to give access to some of your teams to bank statements right without giving them full access to hubdoc you can then just push those bank statements through to, to dropbox uh, perhaps you're a bookkeeper and you know you do the bookkeeping work for uh, an accounting firm and they say oh well well bank statements would be amazing, you know, without giving them full access to muck around with any practices and rules you've created in HubDoc, you can actually push those through to a cloud storage filing cabinet so they can access um, those valuable documents there. When um, HubDoc pushes through the information to QBO or Xero, does it actually include a copy of the invoice, say, for uh, um, an expense as an example? Yeah, absolutely right. So um, whether we push it through as a spend money, purchase, you know, sales invoice, credit note, what have you, we do attach a copy of that source document. Um, and really that gives me, you know, peace of mind that my books are audit proofed in the accounting platform, right, in the general ledger in case of an audit because, um, you know, I think it should be an expectation that all businesses will be audited at some time or another. Um, another thing we can do, though, is we can push to zero file. So even if you didn't have us creating a transaction for that document, for, for whatever reason, um, we can push that to zero files inbox um, just to have that there, right? To have that there for peace of mind that a new copy is made and that it's there. Um, and finally, we can email forward documents to you know, any e email address as well. Great, thank you. Um, any further questions? Perfect. Well, um, thank you so much, Rochelle. I, I always love doing these tech talks and, and telling our, our story, as, as so to speak. Um, if anyone wants to email me or, or shoot me a call, here are uh, my, my details. Um, we are here in Australia. We have a Sydney-based office, and our team is is growing quite quite rapidly. Um, so, you know, if you just want to talk to us, um, we'd love to you know explain our product a little bit more, do a bit of a sales demo. Um, as once again, with uh, you know Rochelle's um, blessing, I will you know send some links as a follow up uh, demo sign up, as well as uh, some other um, you know pricing and and connection links that should be valuable. Tamsin has asked if it integrates with MYOB, Matt. Yeah, that's a great question. So we don't have a direct integration with MYOB at this point in time. We, we do work closely with their product managers. Um, we're actually waiting till uh, I guess a more robust, meaningful integration can be created whereby we can actually attach a source document and that we can um, push other types of transactions through other than just, um, you know, pushing through a uh, payable directly to uh, the bank feed. So the short answer is no, un unfortunately, we, we will look to integrate with them in, in the future. Um, what we find though is our platform can be used without an attaching general ledger, right? We're still giving you immediate access to bank statements that you would still need to service your clients. And, and you know, many of our, um, you know, I'll use QuickBooks Desktop as an example. Many of our QuickBooks Desktop based clients in North America use us for bank statement 
automation and to get source documents together, even though we can't create, you know, that direct automation of, of transaction creation. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, so um, if there's no further questions, we can wrap it up here. And yes, um, Julia, in, in answer to your question, um, I have recorded this session and all of the registrants for this session will actually receive a link to that recording. Um, and we'll also be uploading it to the website for all members um, to have a look at as a reference point um, down the track when they're considering uh, different client needs and so on. Um, so, Matt, I'd, if you would like to share with me the additional details you spoke about, I'll ensure that they are included in that email that we send out to um, registrants for this event. Perfect. Well, I just say one more time, thank you so, so much. Um, you know, for allowing me to tell the story and, and to show everyone through HubDoc. And, uh, you know, look forward to chatting with many of you at some point in the future. Thanks to you as well, Matt, on behalf of AAT's members. Thanks for your time today. Perfect. See you, everyone. Bye.